Three live crew, family drama. <laughs> Beware. This mother is a bad jam. Beware. The James Gang on the first impact of the month defeat Buck Quartermain and Kenny King. I, you know what's funny? Mm -hmm. I saw Kenny King on these shows and I'm like, you know what? He is kind of just ready to be a guy on these shows. Yeah, he's athletic. He has a little bit of presence to him. Got a little look about yeah. him. Yeah. He's, 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 he, like, you see Buck, you see Lex, you see David Young, and you're like, you're job guys for life. You do see Kenny King and you're like, more there. There's more there. Yeah. It, 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 he has a better look about him. He's younger. Like, you know, something, like, you look at Kenny King, you're like, hmm, okay. I'm surprised they didn't, like, try and pick him up. Because mm, he's only around just doing jobs, not for very long. But he's been here for a while now. He's, he was, because he did some stuff earlier on, too. Uh, Jackhammer and one and only by Kip for on King for the win. Conan appears on the screen with Homicide and challenges the James Gang to a pay-per-view match at against all odds. Uh, no, Apollo. Apollo's status is in question. Apollo and Homicide are wrestling the James Gang on the pay-per-view, but th from there, it's undecided. Apollo doesn't even get there. The feeling is that they have to make a statement about guys missing pay-per-view <laughs> shows. Obviously, the feeling is that it's more than just a transportation problem out of his control because nobody would be mad at him over that. Oh, well, they were pretty mad at Ares and Strong. Wrong. Well, they made a choice, but also, yes. I know, I'm just I'm just trying to defend. <laughs> uh, but in Apollo's case, they do seem to think that he, he happens to magically have transportation issues every time he's on pay-per-view, in which he might be losing. Apollo, the big star. Yeah, it is. We talked about this with Shocker, but it is one of those things where, like, he's a star in Puerto Rico, but then comes to America and is a job guy. So it must be feel really weird to, like, have that relationship where you're like, I'm a star in my home country, but then I'm trying to make it somewhere else. And I'm just doing jobs on undercards and six minute matches. But also, I'm shit in those matches, so I can't really complain. <laughs> it's a weird one. But I guess, you know, ego is ego. You're a star, you're a star. Mm. Which does mean... Have, did we do the Apollo? <laughs> oh, we did. We I think we did run down the Apollo stuff last time, didn't we? I, I did, and it was horrible. So I'm not doing it again. Uh, yeah, then you ended up on his Wikipedia page, and it was unfortunate. Is there any so, other yeah. stuff that builds this pay-per-view match? Um... <laughs> Isn't there like... Uh, oh, LAX have a squash no. on the February 4th. Yeah, there's a squash, I was going to say. So Conan, Homicide, and Apollo. With Apollo! Which, this is, I think, Apollo's la actual last match. Defeat Frankie Capone, Rod Steele, and Bruce Steele. Of course. Apollo is now dressed in, like, edgy shorts, but he has the same bright red boots. <laughs> I kind of love it when people are like, I'm a bad guy now, I'm going to wear shorts, but I will still w wear my wrestling boots. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, it, the, the boots don't even match the shorts. It would be one thing if the shorts were red, so they would at least match, but the shorts were a different color. No, that makes it better. Uh, Frankie Capone is Francisco uh, Chiazzo, who passed away recently as well. Uh, worked a bunch of GCW as well, so um, popping up here. Mm. It was one of those things. It's like, oh, oh. And uh, I, I like the way I phrased this as if Conan did the move. But the Doomsday Bulldog gives Conan the win. It's Homicide and Apollo who did the Doomsday Bulldog as opposed to the uh, Conan having any involvement in that. It's important to note here that um, Conan isn't even trying to wear any semblance of gear. Conan can't move at this he point. He's just like in clothes. Like, that, that man cannot move at this point. He should not be wrestling. <laughs> yeah, which is why, you know, he transitions into just kind of doing promos. Yeah, stuff. so LAX jumped the guys after the match, but the James Gang makes the save. That brings us to the pay-per-view match, in which Apollo's not around anymore. We have Machete now. <laughs> Yay. The Latin American exchange. It's not that Machete, so don't get too excited, guys. <laughs> it's, uh, what's his name? It's down here somewhere. Um, Ricky Vega, who was backstage at the tapings and has asked to fill in in the spot. So it's a Homicide and Machete facing uh, the James Gang in a nothing pay-per-view match where BG pins Machete with a bump handle slam. At least Homicide didn't get pinned. Uh, Conan is really hurting as both uh, as he needs both shoulder surgery and hip replacement surgery he needs the hip replacement for a couple of years but has been putting it off but it's gotten really bad as he has trouble walking just get your hip replaced dude mm. Uh, likely through with the company is Apollo. Apollo worked the uh, February 11th show for IWA in Puerto Rico. He went out after the show with Slash of uh, Disciples of the New Church fame, I believe. Uh, to, uh, maybe it's someone different. Chris Kindred? Flash, uh, the, a Flash fan again. Okay, different Slash. To Slash's apartment, which is five minutes from the San Juan International Airport. The plan was for Apollo to sleep over and then that he, they'd get up at 6.30 and go to the airport with plenty of time. When Chris Kindred woke up, Apollo was nowhere to be seen. He waited for a while, figuring Apollo like went for a walk but the Apollo never came back uh, Kindred assumed he had already taken a cab he never showed up to the plane like last month he called ahead and said his flight was cancelled however unlike last month when he claimed similar problems this time TNA checked and his flight was not cancelled <laughs> hmm. He even told people in Puerto Rico that there was a bomb scare at the airport, but there was no such thing as that was also easy to check. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, there was one report that he missed his flight, but when he went to the airport to fly standby, but couldn't get a flight. Uh, so he missed his flight. There was one report that he missed his flight, went to the airport to fly standby, but then couldn't get on a later flight. Apollo is known for not liking to do jobs, as that has been an issue in Puerto Rico, but he's worked in TNA in a bottom role doing jobs regularly. The plan was for him to do the job in the match and then afterwards have Homicide and Conan turn on him, although he likely wasn't aware of that So <laughs> before he trying to get not get on the plane. It wouldn't figure, take a brain surge and figure out that he was likely doing the job, particularly coming off the no-show, uh, and then Ricky Vega filled in. So that is the end of Apollo and TNA, and we will have a much better version of LAX because of it. So thumbs up, Apollo. Thank you. I like how they knew that this Apollo thing wasn't going to last forever, even in LAX. He would want, like, obviously, because he no-showed was, I, I think, set in motion plans to take him out so that they would actually have, like, at least story continuity for why he's suddenly not there. If he was showing up every week and being a quote-unquote team player, you do wonder, would they have just stuck with the Homicide Apollo team and would LAX have been, like, a much worse act because of it? That wouldn't have lasted yeah. as much, as long by any means. LAX kind of went down as one of the better parts of TNA history. People remember it very fondly. But there's a world in which Apollo doesn't no-show a bunch of shows and suddenly that team was a lot worse. And doesn't probably exist for, like... Uh, like nowhere near as long right and then we don't get LAX 2.0 and then like what does Homicide and TNA look like if, if LAX kind of falls apart does Homicide do something else does he just kind of crash out of TNA it's, it's interesting to think about that alternate reality yeah. that Apollo set in motion here thank you Apollo for not showing up <laughs> on many levels <laughs> yeah that is against all odds 2006. The pay per view is pretty good. They're like there's some good matches in the pay per view. Uh, the month of TV was pretty boring. Yeah, it's like it's it was boring but not like bad. Which has kind of been where I've been at for most of these TVs. Yeah, it's like perfectly functional. It gets where it needs to go, but you don't sit and watch 40 minutes and you're like pumped. You're not like, oh, what a great episode of television. You're like, no. that is like mechanically good at getting where you need to go without being particularly exciting. Yeah, I'm do hoping that we reach a point where that will be the case. <laughs> we are getting more shtick and antics because the Planet Jarrett stuff and the paparazzi production That's stuff is ramping need. up. That's what we need. I need it to be a show that I can laugh at. You mm. know? I don't expect TNA to be delivering me like an AEW like high quality dynamite, you know? And then you'll get to the Russo shows where they become like categorically insane. <laughs> so you can look forward to that. Which too. is what we want. <laughs> we can make content out of that. 